Science can't live with it and can't live without it. One year ago, the media was buzzing with the story that honeybees were mysteriously disappearing without any explanation. Beekeepers were discovering when they opened their hives in the spring that thousands of their bees were not there any longer. The story quickly spread through the media as one of the newly emerging feel weird about nature stories which was becoming fashionable because of all the talk about global warming, dramatic changes in the weather, and ongoing fear of hurricanes, you remember. But quickly the potential economic impact on the fruit and food industries emerged as the follow-on story to the disappearance of bees as people said, hey, what about our food? See, as the population of bees goes, so go a huge portion of the foods we rely on. Apples, beans, peaches and pears, broccoli, beets and eggplant, onions, okra and parsnips, blackberries, gooseberries and dill, plus about 150 other crops. And it was an important story, a buzzing wake-up call that yes, we and nature are still connected. We just seem to be forgetting it a lot. Some would say, as I do, we need to reconnect with that connection a lot more right now because nature is in trouble. So then the question was, what's causing this sudden disappearance of the bees? It was quickly given an ominous moniker, CCD, for Colony Collapse Disorder. There were immediate congressional hearings on CCD, which didn't accomplish anything. The weekly news magazines did their three-pagers. It ended up as fodder for late-night talk shows, and then it just went away. But not the problem. Most directly impacted was a unique sector of the American economy, those people who raise the bees and hives and transport them around the country. Thousands and thousands of truckloads of hives head out across America in the spring. It's a business, renting bees. Agribusiness relies on these bees to help create bumper crops of fruit, nuts, berries, and vegetables. Bring in the bees, release them from their hives into the groves, fields, valleys, and millions of bees head out and touch every flower they can. It's a lot of hard work, but bees do it for the honey, not for the money. Those bees pollinate the billions of flowers, and that's what makes us all so happy. Great food when we want it. Or so it was, when bees and nature and humans lived in balance. But something suddenly went very wrong. In the past year, a lot of science has been done on CCD, funding coming from governments, NGOs, and business. And what have they concluded? In a recent gathering in Sacramento, which attracted 1,300 beekeepers, scientists, and business interests, the message that emerged was, it's really too early to identify what's at the root of CCD. A lot of research is looking at the possibility that mites, a long-standing nemesis of beehives, may be the cause. The press recently focused on the possibility that the bees have suddenly, all at once, just had enough. They're stressed out and the stress is causing their health to diminish and therefore they are being impacted. And a number of other factors are being discussed including global warming and its effects on water supplies, pesticides that are always a problem for bee people, even chemtrails are bantied about. In response, the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, is pledging to set up and help fund studies in the hopes of uncovering the root cause of this mystery, which they say could take five years. But we don't have five years. We may never be able to prove what drove the bees to disappear, short of asking them personally. With so much at stake, literally one-third of all of our food, maybe it's time to take our best shot. And here's mine. The common factor amongst all of these prime bee-killing suspects, mites, stress, and viruses, is that the bees die in the hives and nearby. But in CCD, you don't find masses of dead bees. As a matter of fact, you don't find many dead bees at all. It means that bees are flying away and not returning. Now what would suddenly make bees en masse do such a thing? Is there something new in their world that has occurred in the last few years that could account for their strange behavior? The answer is yes. And the correlation between it and the disappearance is striking. 
Pesticide should be at the top of the list, and specifically the hottest, newest pesticide introduced in the last few years by chemical giants like Monsanto and Bayer. A new insecticide is appearing in crops all around the world. In the U.S., its use has spread phenomenally in the last few years. Why? It works. And here's what's interesting about how it works. It doesn't really kill insects like other pesticides. It makes them stupid and sick. With our food crops, Monsanto, Bayer, and others have found a most amazing way of getting neonicotinoids into the insects. They impregnate seeds so that as the plant develops, it spreads into every nook, leaf, and blossom. Farmers don't have to keep reapplying new chemicals to fend off the bugs. They love this stuff. When some unsuspecting sap-sucking bug starts its happy meal on a fresh melon stem, it gets zapped, it doesn't feel good, it gets sick, and it gets confused. Now science has been done on how neonicotinoids affect bees specifically, and science can say bees do not die from exposure to plants that contain neonicotinoids. Therefore, neonicotinoids are safe for bees. But you need to read the fine print to discover an interesting side effect. Neonicotinoids have a dramatic effect on bee memory. Bees exposed to neonicotinoids have a hard time learning new things. They just can't seem to remember. Hmm, they just can't seem to remember. Let's see, I left my hive an hour ago and I just don't remember where it is. As a matter of fact, I don't remember much about what I'm doing. Where did I put that hive, or is it a hive I'm supposed to... Maybe I'll just fly around and see if I can remember what it was I was supposed to remember. Hmm. What amazes me is the way in which both science and the press seem to be so juvenile about addressing this enormous problem that could dramatically impact all of us here on Earth who rely on fruit, vegetables, nuts, and beans to survive. I know these giant global corporations have a tremendous amount of power, but I think we humans have rights to protect our livelihoods, not to mention our lives. My fight is for truth, science, and the American way of life. A lot of living things on planet Earth are in trouble, and so too the bees. It's not a new virus or stress or mites and parasites that have suddenly made such a difference. It's the neonicotinoids more than anything else. It's too bad that major corporations like Monsanto and Bayer might lose this lucrative cow. And it's also a shame that such a promising new insecticide should have such unspeakable side effects. Where have we heard this story before? But can we really just pretend it's something it's not? No. I can't. I'm willing to bet that 10 years from now, reporters will be writing about the newest study, which officially ties neonicotinoids to that mysterious disappearance of bees 10 years ago. And then we find out this new product isn't actually so new, and that it isn't such a mystery about bees and neonicotinoids. France banned the use of neonicotinoids way back in the 1990s because it was responsible for a large die-off of bees. Hmm. So what to do? Wrap your head around truth. See how that feels for a change. If we're going to survive, we'd better begin right now. This is Sidney Wildsmith inviting you to join us each week here on the Wild Side News Update. We don't get food.